Getting started with Scan and Self Pro Part 1, Simulation Setup. There are five steps to set up a simulation in Scan and Self Pro. Select Scenario, Add Components and Materials, Apply Restraints, Apply Loads, and Set Resolution and Solver. Step 1. Select Scenario. To run Scan and Self Pro, type SNS Pro in Rhino's command line and hit Enter. If you have already run a simulation for this model, the Scenario Selector window will appear. The Add button will create a new blank scenario with a default name. Click the Copy button to create a duplicate of the selected scenario. The copy can be modified to experiment with alternate scenarios. Click the Delete button to delete the selected scenario. A window will pop up asking you to confirm the delete. To edit a scenario or review results from past simulations, select the scenario and click OK. The Scan and Cell Pro window will pop up with the Specify tab open. This tab contains all the controls necessary for simulation setup. The title can be changed, allowing for organization and easy retrieval of a unique scenario. Step 2. Add Components and Materials Click Add under the Component section. Scan and Self Pro allows for multi-component analysis. Components are considered as bonded together at areas of contact. In this model, the steps and backbone will be added separately since they are made of different materials. First select the backbone support. Once a component is selected, the material selector window will pop up. Scan and Self Pro supports three different material types, isotropic, wood, and orthotropic. To learn more about materials and how to add them, visit Intact Solutions School. If the material you are looking for is not listed, you can add it by clicking the Custom button. Manually add the material properties and click Save to add this new material to the list. To learn more about adding custom materials, visit Intact Solutions School. For this component, we'll set the material to be Steel AISI 1020. Click Apply to save the material for the added component. Next, click Add Components again to add the steps. Select the steps. Under the Wood tab, select Black Walnut as the material. Applying wood materials requires specification of grain direction. Visit Intact Solutions School to learn how to apply wood materials using the different options. For this simple example, we'll choose the Flat Sawn option. Click Apply. Step 3. Apply Restraints. Click the Add button under the Restraint section. Select the faces you wish to restrain. In this case, we'll restrain the top and bottom of the stairs. You can also restrain edges by selecting the Linear Edges option in the command line. Press Enter when you're done selecting faces to restrain. A restraint can be edited by selecting it in the restraint box and clicking Edit. The default is to fully restrain the selected face or edge. In the Restraint Editor window, you can choose to only restrain the selected face in one or two directions. You can also change the title of the restraint. Click OK to save changes and return to the main window. Step 4. Apply Loads Click Add under the Load section to add a load. There are two groups of loads in Scan and Self Pro, Surface Loads and Body Loads. To add a body load, select the Body option in the Rhino command line. The Body Load Creator window will pop up. This window contains controls to apply a rotational body load or a linear acceleration. To learn more about applying body loads, visit Intact Solutions School. The other group of loads, surface loads, can be applied by clicking Add and then selecting a face. For this example, I'll select the top face of one step. I'd like to simulate a person standing on the step. Once you have selected the faces, hit Enter and the Boundary Load Creator will pop up. This window contains options to apply several different surface load types. Like always, you can change the title to something unique. I'll briefly explain what each force type is and how to apply it. The two vector force options apply a force to the face in a specified direction. If the first option is selected, the user must input three quantities separated by commas, the force magnitudes in the x, y, and z directions. A preview of the force is shown on the model with red arrows. You can confirm that the arrows are defined by the inputted vector components. If more than one face was selected, you have the option to distribute the force between all faces or check the per face box to duplicate the force on each face. The second vector force option requires input of a direction and magnitude. Type the desired magnitude in the text box. 
Then define the direction by drawing a line in the Rhino viewport. The first point you pick is the tail of the vector and the second point defines the head. You can check the direction by looking at the load preview. The next load option is a scalar force. Only one input is necessary for this option, the magnitude of the force. The force is applied in the normal direction to the face. The fourth load option is pressure, which is a force per unit area. Type a numerical value into the text box, defining the pressure magnitude. The pressure is applied in the normal direction to the face and is shown on the model with blue arrows. A varying pressure can also be applied using the pressure expression option. Type a valid expression into the text box. Visit Intact Solutions for a full list of supported functions. A preview of the pressure expression is shown with gray arrows. For example, 2y would produce the following preview, with the pressure increasing as y increases. The sixth load type is hydrostatic, which is a pressure due to the weight of a fluid. Two inputs are required, drawing the plane which defines the surface level of the fluid and typing in the fluid's density. Lastly, a torque is a load that applies a twisting force around an axis. The torque axis needs to be defined by drawing a line in the Rhino viewport. Also define the magnitude by typing in a positive or negative number. A preview of the applied torque will be shown in green. Load values can be applied using any of the unit systems available in the pull-down menu. For this example, I'll apply a 200 pound scalar force to simulate a man standing on the step. Click OK to apply the force and return to the main window. If desired, the gravity box can be checked to apply gravity in the negative Z direction. Step 5. Set Resolution and Solver The resolution slider can be adjusted to specify the simulation resolution. Check the Show Grid checkbox to display the resolution grid on the model. Look at thin areas of the model to ensure that the resolution is sufficient. A good rule of thumb is to have at least a few grid cubes across every cross section. For this model, around 100,000 seems to be a good number. You can also change the color of the grid using the pull down menu. It is sometimes helpful to select a bright color for increased visibility if your model is dark. Once the resolution is set, you may want to check on simulation settings to ensure the optimal settings are selected. Select the third tab to review simulation settings. In the first section, you can choose which linear solver is used to compute the simulation results. The DSS solver is very fast, but it can consume large amounts of memory if the resolution is too high. The SNS solver is an iterative solver that does not require much memory, but may take longer than the DSS solver. The precision value controls the relative error tolerance at which the SNS solver considers the simulation completed. The auto setting automatically switches between the solvers to optimize simulation time and memory usage. If the resolution is lower than the DSS threshold, the DSS solver will be used. If the resolution is higher than the DSS threshold, the SNS solver will be used. Recall that the resolution was set at slightly above 100,000. So for this scenario, the SNS solver will be used. The simulation settings section displays the current simulation settings in the list box. Check the Material CSYS Display checkbox to display material coordinate systems on the model. This is especially useful when applying wood or orthotropic materials. Click the Restore Defaults button to reset the simulation settings to their default values. Click the Activate button to activate the Scan and Solve license. When you have finished changing settings, navigate back to the Specify tab. Then hit Go to run the simulation. To learn how to analyze the results of this simulation, watch part 2, Analyzing Results. Thanks for watching. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to contact us at support at